I'm Nintendo. And I'm Sega. This is Console Wars! Drunk? I shaved my beard, dude. <laughs> oh man, that's pretty funny. Wait a minute. Oh no, I got so drunk I grew a beard. That's not possible. I am in so much pain. <sighs> I'm never drinking again. Oh yeah, me too. <sighs> huh? What's that? Oh right. My cousin's coming by today. He said he had something important to tell me. Maybe he's adopted. <laughs> he is adopted. You know this. You made fun of him for years. He had to take therapy. He just recently got over it. All right. So he's doing good. Come in. Hey, cousin. Hey, not cousin. What's up? So what's the big news you want to tell me? Well, I'm trading for a new job, and I'm pretty excited about it. Hmm, let me guess. A dentist? No, a doctor. No, I decided to become a ninja. The auditions are next week. Ninja? Huh, I didn't know that job had openings. I've known you practically your whole life. You don't have any ninja skills. Oh no, watch what I do to this avocado. Hiya! Well, you definitely didn't cut it in half. You barely even dented it. No, but I did hit it, because I have the aim of the ninja. Uh, I think you're gonna need more than that. Oh yeah? That has about the moves of a ninja. I don't think the moonwalk is enough to be a ninja. Anything else? I could also do the cha-cha slide. Anyone can do that. They tell you the moves in the song. Do you have any actual ninja skills? Like sword fighting or doing flips? Well, no, but I'm sure that my skills are more than enough for the auditions. Well, they're not, but don't worry, Kyle. We got you. We do? Yeah, we'll teach them the way we learn everything. Video games! And I got the perfect game. You gotta go 8-bit, but it's a classic. Ninja Gaiden. Oh, that's a good choice. Yeah, let's grab the Nintendo game. Whoa, whoa, what are you doing? I was going to play Ninja Gaiden for Nintendo. Right, but uh, Ninja Gaiden's better for the Sega Master System. Ninja Gaiden on Sega? That sounds lame. That's it! Are we doing this? Yep! But since we're going 8-bit, that better change. Best Ninja Gaiden! Ninja Gaiden was originally released for the arcade in 1988. It was a beat-em-up in the style Double Dragon. Since then, the series had seen releases on multiple PC and console games, with the last Ninja Gaiden game being released in 2014. As a matter of fact, for an in-depth comparison of all these games, check out the 50th episode of Same Name Different Game. You might even see a couple of people you know. But today, we're comparing the Ninja Gaiden release for the NES and Sega Master System. Ninja Gaiden for Nintendo was developed and published by Tecmo. It was released in 1988 in Japan, 89 in the US, and 91 in Europe. Ninja Gaiden for the Sega Master System was developed by Sims and published by Sega. It was released in 1992 and only in Europe due to discontinued support for the console in other regions. Two similar games based on the same franchise. Which one's better? Let's find out. Ninja Gaiden for the Master System? It's a pretty good looking game. The characters look great. From the main character, to regular enemies, to the bosses. Levels look fantastic too. So many different environments. You got your nature level, your non-nature level, water, fire, and ice. And look at that character animation. Smooth as anything. And some good looking cutscenes don't hurt either. That's nice, but the Nintendo game looks incredible. What can I say? This is a fantastic looking game. I also have incredible looking characters ranging from cool looking enemies to cool looking bosses. 
So many good looking levels in my game too. You like different environments? Check this out. Here's your nature level. Here's your non-nature level. Water. Ice. And forget fire. Here's a creepy alien looking level. And smooth character animations? Plenty in the Nintendo game. And I've got good looking cutscenes too. Yeah, it's not bad, but let's start with the most obvious difference. Color. The Sega game is hands down the more colorful of the two. Put any two levels side by side, and you can see how much more colorful it is. It's like the Sega game is solid colors, while the Nintendo game is a bit watered down. I don't know about that, but you can't deny the level of detail in my game. The Nintendo game has so much more detail. Just check out some similar levels side by side, and you'll see. Look how plain the Master System game is, and objects are given depth in Nintendo. There's lots of interesting uses of perspective. The walls and platform almost have a 3D look to them. You don't have anything like this in a Master System game. It's like the difference between someone drawing a square and a cube. Your levels are boring. Don't get ahead of yourself. I still think my levels look better. Okay, the levels on Sega might not have as much detail as the Nintendo game, but they do look more active. The Sega game has moving parts, like waterfalls, rising lava, and whatever's going on here. Point is, nothing on the Nintendo environments move. I still want to talk about one more thing. The bosses. The bosses look so much better in my game. The bosses on Sega are tiny, bland, and boring. Bosses on Nintendo are large and incredibly detailed. Just check out the final bosses and tell me which one you think is more intimidating. It's obvious which game looks better. Oh, we're not done yet. I want to talk about the enemies. The Nintendo game has some weird looking enemies. You have this dog, I think? You have an ugly pumpkin man? Why does he look like that? Then you have these guys, and while they don't look that bad, the character animations when they move are a bit weak. And is that Kratos? Wait for me, boy! Well, your enemies on Sega aren't perfect either. You have this lame looking skeleton, and short men with gas masks and suits? But the Sega enemies make sense. Sega has samurais and ninjas, the Nintendo has... Jason? Also, the Sega ninjas actually blend into their surroundings, like this guy. Or these guys. Not like you're, hey, look at me, I'm a ninja in green for no reason. That's not a ninja. I still think my game looks better, because of more detailed levels. Well, it's too bad lots of your environments look like cut and paste jobs. What? You heard me. Sure, the levels on Nintendo are nice and detailed, but if you look closer, you see something extra. You see certain objects have a black outline around them. Sometimes the outline extends well beyond the object. Looks like some bad Photoshop job of someone who claims they went to the prom with Natalie Portman. Admit it, you did it! It's close, but Sega has the edge. With better use of color, environments that move, better looking enemies, and no black outline, graphics go to Sega. Anyway, the presentation of both games is... Trouble opening a beer? I got you. No, it's okay, you don't have no to- No problem! Oh my god! You nailed it! Awesome job! Um. Anyway, our presentation has lots of similarities. Oh, agreed! Both games have cutscenes before and after every level. Both games have sweet title cards with our hero sliding in style. The HUDs in both games are also very identical. Both games take a page right out of Castlevania. Both games have the score, time, number of lives, power points, and player and boss life. Just like Castlevania. So it's looking like a tie. Are you kidding me? My game should win best presentation because it has some of the best cutscenes in a Nintendo game ever. Let's start with the Sega cutscenes. They're nice, they definitely look good, and they tell the story well. But the Nintendo cutscenes? What can I say? They're fully animated! Pushing the console to the limits, these are some of the most impressive cutscenes in 8 bits. So cinematic. Look at the parallax scrolling. It's still impressive to this day how much these cutscenes actually move. And on Sega? No movement! Whoa! Back up! I have cutscenes that move! Check this out! There! Did you see it? You're kidding, right? Okay, what about the glaring typo at the end? Thank you for playing, and see you next... Tecmo? Okay, even I'll admit that's pretty funny. But my presentation is still better. In my HUD, I have the stage number. Sega don't. This decision was easy. 
with the super sweet cutscenes that actually move and feel like a movie, and having the stage number in the HUD. Presentation goes to Nintendo. Well, the music in the Master System game is... Are you impressed? I used my ninja skills to blend in with my environment. Now I am a perfect copy of you. But you're still wearing the ninja outfit underneath, and I don't even wear glasses. Whoa! I'm seeing double! He's an imposter! No, he's the imposter. It's so hard to tell these two exact copies apart. Anyways, the music in the Master System game is fantastic. The Master System music was composed by Takahashi Horiguchi. This soundtrack is excellent. It's action-packed! It can also have a sense of danger. Just so many good songs! The music in the Nintendo game was composed by Kaiji Yamagishi and Ryuichi Nita. This soundtrack is classic. You have action-packed songs. Deep songs. And songs that just rock. pretty good. So is yours, but mine is still better. So we both have lots of different songs for the different levels, but the Nintendo game also has lots of different music for the different cutscenes. And these songs are also excellent. The Sega game just uses the same song for every cutscene. I'm still not sure that's better. Well, that doesn't convince you. Then let's compare sound effects. The Nintendo game has two incredibly satisfying sound effects. When you kill an enemy. And when you get an item. It's much cooler than the Sega game sound effects. Sega game sounds good, but my game definitely has the edge. For having an amazing soundtrack and more satisfying sound effects, sound goes to Nintendo. Both games have similar gameplay. Both games are side-scrolling action platformers. They have you play as ninja Ryu Hayabusa. You have one button to jump and one to attack. You can also get different power-ups for a special attack. It can be used by pressing up and attack. Again, very similar to Castlevania. The object of the games is simple. Get through the stages without dying. The end of every level has a boss. Beat the last boss and beat the game. Both games are definitely a challenge. Both games have you fly back when you get hit, leading to many premature deaths. Hard games, so it's a good thing they both give you unlimited continues. There are some differences, of course. The Nintendo game lets you cling to walls. This opens up the game to some interesting platforming. You can't cling to walls on Sega. You automatically wall jump. So, you can only wall jump. A move, by the way, that will be used in later games of the series. And even though I can't cling to walls, I can cling to platforms. In the Sega game, you have the ability to cling onto platforms that are too high. You can also pass through platforms and cling to them that way. This definitely makes platforming in my game very interesting. No clinging or passing through platforms on Nintendo. I also have other moves you know. I have the ability to move when crouched on Sega, something you can't do on Nintendo. And I have a move that can take out every enemy on the screen, at the cost of life. You definitely don't have anything like that on Nintendo. So, I have cool power-ups that you don't. The Nintendo game has a power-up that stops time. 
I also have the Boomerang Shuriken. Then, there's a very useful upward fire attack. And the coolest one, the Cyclone attack when you jump. Decimates bosses. You don't have those on Sega. So, I have power-ups you don't have. I don't have a Boomerang Shuriken, but I do have a regular one, and a more powerful one. Also, I have a weapon that fires in four different directions. And best of all, I have a heat-seeking weapon that targets enemies and item boxes. Plus, my game does one item better. Both games have the flame shield, and while Nintendo's is a one-time use only, on Sega, you can reuse it. That's right, you can keep reusing the flame shield like any power-up as long as you have enough power-up points. And let's talk about those power-up points. When you die in Nintendo, your power-up points are cut in half. If you use a continue, it goes down to zero. If you start a new level, zero. In a Sega game, however, if you die, you don't lose any power-up points. But what if you use a continue? Same thing. New level? Actually, it is different. Because they give you 200 more points! Bottom line, by not losing any of those points, my game is more forgiving, and ultimately, less frustrating. And my game also has interactive environments. Like I said before, I have lots of different looking levels, but they don't just look cool, they affect gameplay as well. The ice level is slippery. The lava level raises and lowers to show platforms. The water level has water currents that push you. Then this level has a force that also pushes you. No environmental factors to deal with a Nintendo game. Ice isn't slippery or nothing. Well, your game is frustrating. Let's talk about those controls. One problem with the Master System game is the D-pad. I'm sorry, control pad. This wonky thing is hard to get accurate, and in a fast-paced action platformer, you can't afford anything less than pinpoint accuracy. One area affected by the control pad is simply jumping from platform to platform. The control pad makes it hard to be accurate, so instead of hitting your target, you'll find yourself falling to your death at no fault of your own. Another area affected by the control pad is using power-ups. Lots of times you try to use a projectile only to have your character face the wrong way and waste your points. No wonder it never resets to zero when you die. You need it for all the times you throw a weapon in the wrong direction. And the Nintendo D-Pad works perfectly. You never miss a platform or aim in the wrong direction with the Nintendo D-Pad. It's so accurate and precise, it works perfectly with this game. You can move with such precision and such accuracy. Not the case in the Sega game. You hold your breath when you jump on Sega. Not on Nintendo. You know you're going to land where you want. Okay, let's talk about one of the major problems in your game. Difficulty. Simply stated, the Nintendo game is hard. It starts off easy enough, but in the later stages, it just feels impossible. The main problem with the Nintendo game is the respawning enemies. They respawn so fast, you're on edge the entire time you play. At times, enemies can even keep you on an endless, hopeless loop with no way out. Some areas are just nightmares because of how many enemies they keep throwing at you. It's unfair. It's overwhelming. It's ridiculously hard! Give me the Sega game any day. It gets gradually more difficult. It doesn't suddenly become impossible to play, like the Nintendo game. And let's talk a bit about those continues. As I said before, both games have unlimited continues. The Sega game always has you start from the beginning of the stage that you died on, no matter who kills you. This is also true in the Nintendo game, until you fight the boss of the game. The boss is at the end of stage 6-3. In a normal game, if you died, you'd have to start the beginning of 6-3. But for some sick reason, this game has you start from 6-1. You have to sludge all the way through 6-1, 6-2, and 6-3 all over again. And these are some of the most difficult levels in the game. That's just cruel, because the boss of the game will kill you a lot, because he has three different forms. This game is too hard. Granted, my game is difficult. But my game is more fun to play. In the Sega game, lots of enemies take two hits to kill. In Nintendo, all enemies are one-hit kills. Why is this important? Because enemies that die in one hit make my game more fun. It's so fun to blaze through a level, taking out enemies one after another, never having to stop the action for one second. It's a lot more fun than the slow-paced Sega game. Having to take out an enemy with two hits really slows down the action. Sure, it's still fun in its own right. But compared to the Nintendo game, it feels a bit boring. What's more fun? This... Or this...
this. Or this. Sure, it's more intense, but it's ultimately more fun. This applies to the bosses, too. The bosses on Sega are overly simple. They all have easy to identify patterns. And if you have the heat seeking power up, it's incredibly easy and ultimately boring. Sure, the first Nintendo boss is easy, but they get more challenging with each level. It makes it more satisfying to beat them. They're not just walks in the park like the Sega game. Hey, I'll take boring, because your game is just too difficult. It's definitely hard, but it can be incredibly satisfying. Yes, the Nintendo game is difficult, but I feel like this only adds to the game's enjoyment. Sure, the first few times you play a level, you might get beat bad. But if you keep at it, learn techniques, remember patterns, you'll find yourself on the other side of the beating. And it's so satisfying when you turn it around when a level that once used to destroy you becomes putty in your hands. Having a run where you're just taking out enemies left and right without even getting hit feels so good. There's no equivalent feeling like that in the Sega game. The Nintendo game can be so much more satisfying once you put in the time. It's close, but my game has better gameplay. With much tighter controls, more fun, and a more satisfying experience, best gameplay goes to Nintendo. Both games are excellent, but one is better, and that game is Ninja Gaiden for Nintendo. It may not have the colors, moving environments, or cool enemies of the Sega game, and it has some black outlines, but it has better looking bosses, more detailed levels, and a bit of 3D perspective. It has better presentation with the stage number and the HUD, but most importantly, animated cinematic cutscenes. It has better sound with more memorable tunes and some incredibly satisfying sound effects. It has better gameplay with tighter controls and being more fun and more satisfying. The Master System game is no pushover though, it's a solid game through and through, a worthy entry into the Ninja Gaiden franchise, it just falls short compared to the Nintendo game. Best Ninja Gaiden goes to Nintendo. Wow guys, that was great, you really showed me the way. We're happy to help. Yes, with all you've taught me here today, I know exactly how to handle the audition. Hi, I'd like to return this outfit because there is no way I'm going to be a ninja. No problem. Any other jobs you'd like to try while you're here today? Yeah, actually, I was thinking international spy. Sorry, we're all out. How about a burger flipper? A burger flipper? I don't know if I could see myself in that. Oh. Yeah, I can do this. Tonight is the final test to see if you're worthy of being Ninja. Recruits, show me what you've got. The Moonwalk. That's exactly what this organization needs. You two are hired. Hey! Thanks for checking out our latest video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Special thanks to the Game Nerd for his donation of Ninja Gaiden for the Sega Master System. And thanks to everyone who suggested Ninja Gaiden. And keep those other suggestions coming. We will get to them. Also, check us out on Patreon, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more Console Wars goodness. Later. That was a twist. <laughs> that was a twist. <laughs> what do you think I made of you?